While the early 1930s signalled the crushing days of the Depression, the economic problems led to a football boom. The population of Victoria needed an escape from the appalling hardship, and it was league football which provided the answer. Not only did more spectators attend matches, there were more young men willing to make the grade at VFL level, because the match payments often meant the difference between existing and living. This period also produced a host of champion players, men who were to become legends. There was no better player than Fitzroy's Hayden Bunton, who won the 1931 Brownlow medal in his first year at senior level. He was 20 years old at the time. The following year, Bunton became the first player in the VFL's history to win back-to-back -back medals. When he added a third in 1935, he ensured football mortality. Essendon's Dick Reynolds followed the trend when he won the Brownlow in 1934, 37 and 1938. He too was destined for true greatness as a league footballer. Not only that, Reynolds was Essendon's captain coach between 1939 and 1950, which reaped four premierships for the club. He then guided the Bombers into three more grand finals, but was unable to grab another pennant. But let's go back to 1931, as Collingwood attempted to achieve its fifth premiership in a row under the coaching of Jock McHale. The Magpies made the finals, but their run finished at the hands of Carlton in the first semi-final. The Blues produced a magical final quarter by kicking nine goals in torrential rain. Full forward Harry, Sophie Valance, kicked six of them for a match tally of 11, a record which still exists. But the Blues' finals run came to an end when Geelong beat them by a goal in the preliminary final. The Cats went on to win its second flag by overcoming Richmond in a hard-fought grand final. South Melbourne emerged as the glamour team with its Foreign Legion of 1932. South opened the season with ten wins on the trot, but won only another three for the year. Richmond won its third premiership by leading Carlton at every change, but South made it clear 1933 was going to be its year. The players' performance was nothing short of sensational, because after round ten, they found themselves in eighth position. But a withering burst on the way to the finals left South in third position after the 18 home and away rounds. Richmond looked set to win consecutive flags, but South produced one of its best ever performances to kick eight goals in the last quarter to move into the grand final. Richmond set up a rematch by beating Geelong in the preliminary final. This time, South didn't need a rattling final term because they crushed the Tigers to register their third premiership. One of the more memorable matches from the 33 season was the St Kilda North Melbourne match in round five. Nine St Kilda players were seriously injured and only 16 could take the field after the half-time break. Another player hobbled off the ground and when the bell sounded, the Saints had only 15 players on the field. Nevertheless, St Kilda won the match and emotional officials pinned recognition badges on the survivors of the Torrid match. Badges which were the origin of the present St Kilda crest. Cross center more.